Fluffy Mine by Echo Rainstorm on AO3. Episode 3, Chapter 3, and Boom! I beat up the bad guys! Katsuki exclaimed, running around with a stuffed animal in hand. I helped! Izuku chimed in. Meanwhile, Mitsuki was busy frosting the cake on the counter, her strokes forming a somewhat distorted image of All Might. She may not have been an artist when it came to frosting art, but her love and effort were evident in every stroke. Izuku, darling, you should start to get ready. We'll have to head off to your place soon. Mitsuki reminded Izuku. Izuku quickly put on his shoes, eager to get ready for his party. Who did you invite? Katsuki inquired. Oh, you and your mom and mommy? Oh, and mommy's special friend. He makes her really happy, Izuku replied. Mitsuki overheard this and couldn't help but ruffle Izuku's hair affectionately. Your mom's special friend, huh? What do you think of him? Izuku paused for a moment, considering Mitsuki's question carefully. He is nice, and he loves All Might. He sleeps over sometimes, and he cooked once. It wasn't as good as mommy's, but he tried, Izuku exclaimed with a grin. Mitsuki chuckled at Izuku's description and went back to the cake, carefully placing it in a box for transport. All right, all ready, Izuku? Mitsuki asked. Yep, Izuku replied eagerly. I want to go, Katsuki piped up suddenly. Brat, you said you didn't want to, Mitsuki teased, a playful glint in her eyes. Well, now I do. We are just going to be setting up, Katsuki. I don't care, Katsuki retorted, running off to his room. Mitsuki, can I ask you something? Izuku spoke up. Yes, Izuku, Mitsuki replied, giving him her full attention. What makes someone your dad? Izuku asked. Mitsuki thought for a minute before answering. A dad or a mom? is someone who cares for you, gives you a place to eat, sleep, and loves you, even if they're not your biological family. They are your family. So, mom's special friend is, can he be like my dad? Izuku asked, eyes wide with hope. Yes, Izuku, he can, Mitsuki confirmed, her voice warm and reassuring. Can Kachan be my brother? You don't want Katsuki as your brother. In walked Katsuki, now wearing his new shoes. Brat, no shoes inside, Mitsuki scolded, causing Katsuki to stick out his tongue in response. With everything ready, they all walked out of the house. The short walk to Izuku's home was filled with chatter and laughter. Izuku's heart raced, as he saw his house coming into view. He couldn't wait to celebrate his seventh birthday, feeling like a big boy now. With dreams of attending UA and becoming a hero, he was determined to prove even a freak like him could be loved and become a hero. Inko, sweetie. Namayasa's voice interrupted Inko's task of taking out the kitchen from the freezer. She turned to look at him. Yes, she replied. I'm gonna go get some more of my clothes. Namayasa started, but Inko quickly interjected. No, I'll just wash the ones you have here, she insisted. Sweetie, no, I'll just go get more. Plus, I only have three pairs. I need more. Namayasa countered, trying to reason with her. A brief moment of silence passed before Namayasa continued, his tone gentle and reassuring. Babe, it's gonna be okay. Just a couple of minutes of me being gone. An hour tops. I promise. Okay, Inko relented, allowing Namoyasa to hug her and give her a kiss before he grabbed his keys and walked out. Tushinori, you do not understand how much this means to me. Namoyasa expressed his gratitude as he accepted the now signed poster. You've done so much for me, Namayasa. A few autographs for your son is nothing. All Might replied warmly. He's not, 
Namayasa started to explain, but All Might interrupted him. Nonsense. You're dating his mother, are you not? Well, yeah. And you intend to date her for a while, are you not? Well, yeah, but... Namayasa tried to explain further, but All Might cut him off again. Then, he is like a son to you. I guess. Thank you. Namayasa said sincerely as he headed towards the door. Anything for a dear friend. All my replied before Namayasa left the hospital. As Namayasa walked down the hall, he carefully placed the signed poster in a gift bag. He couldn't wait to hand this to little Izuku. Though Izuku wasn't his biological son, he cared for him deeply and had watched him grow up from a baby to the seven-year-old he was now. Namayasa never expected Izuku to see him as a father figure. Still, he was committed to being there for Inko and Izuku, considering them as his family now. Driving back to Inko's home, Namayasa reflected. He was happy with Inko. She was sweet, lovely, and beautiful. He planned to bring up the idea of moving in together soon as it would make things easier for all of them. But he hated why he had to sleep over so much. He hated the moments when he woke up to Inko's sobs or her panicked claims of someone being in the house. It tore his heart to witness her fear and distress, knowing that he couldn't instantly ease those anxieties. With a better security system in place, Inko would feel safer. He planned to install additional cameras, and improve the overall security of the house next week. Namayasa was determined to make things better for Inko and Izuku. They were his family, and he would do anything in his power to protect and care for them. As he arrived at Inko's house, a car sped by. Namayasa couldn't help but wonder how some people got their driver's license. Inko stood by the stove. The sizzling sound of chicken filled the kitchen. She glanced over the checklist on the counter satisfied that everything was in order except for the food. The aroma in the kitchen filled the air, blending with the warm of the afternoon sunlight streaming through the kitchen window. Amidst her cooking, a series of knocks echoed through the house, drawing Inko's attention away from the stove. She turned off the burner and wiped her hands on a nearby towel, making her way to the front door. The knocks had a familiarity to them, hinting at either Mitsuki's energetic arrival with Izuku or her beloved boyfriend's steady presence. As she approached the door, Inko's thoughts drifted to her boyfriend. He was more than just wonderful and amazing. He was a pillar of support and a comfort in her life. She cherished the moments they spent together and was contemplating asking him to move in, especially considering how well Izuku had taken to him. With a gentle twist of the doorknob, Inko opened the door. As Izuku and Mitsuki and Katsuki approached Izuku's house, their cheerful chatter faded as they noticed police cars parked outside, their flashing lights and casting an eerie glow on the quiet street. Yellow tape cornered off a section of the yard. Kids, stay right here. Mitsuki instructed, her voice tinged with concern as she hurtled towards the police officer gathered near the house. Izuku and Katsuki exchanged a glance, their hands, instinctively, finding each other's for comfort. Achan, I'm scared, Izuku admitted, his voice trembling slightly. Don't worry, furball, I've got you. Katsuki reassured him, squeezing his hand. Mitsuki approached the police officer, her heart pounding with worry. What happened? She demanded. Ma'am, we need you to... The police officer began, but Mitsuki interrupted him, her eyes scanning the scene before her. She's my friend. Why are they cops in her home? I need... Oh. No. 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 Mitsuki gasped, horror dawning on her face, as she saw a body being carried out on a stretcher. Overwhelmed by emotion, she sank down to her knees her hands covering her mouth in shock. Izuku ran up to her, 
What's wrong? He asked. Oh, sweetie, don't... Don't look. Mitski tried to shield Izuku's eyes from the grin's sight unfolding before them. Mom, who is that on the bed? Are they covered? Katsuki joined them. Boys, please look. Izuku, no! Mitsuki's voice cracked with desperation. Mitsuki tried to stop him, but he was already running too. Namayasa! Namayasa turned towards Izuku and immediately picked him up. Why are you crying? He asked softly, wiping away Namayasa's tears with a gentle touch. Don't cry, Izuku whispered. Izuku, I'm sorry. Namayasa struggled to find the right words. Izuku finally looked at Namayasa fully, noticing the blood covering his hands and parts of his clothes. Are you hurt? Izuku asked. I'm not hurt. Izuku, I'm not hurt. Namayasa repeated, his voice barely above a whisper. As Namayasa stepped out of his door, a sense of foreboding grippled him. The front door of Inko's house stood ajar. Ignoring the warning bells ringing in his mind, he rushed inside, his footsteps echoing in the empty hallway. And then he saw it. The red. It was everywhere, staining the once serene environment with a haunting shade of crimson. Without hesitation, he ran towards Inko his heart pounding in his chest. Inko, please, stay with me. Help us on the way. Namayasa pleaded, his voice laced with desperation as he held on to her, trying to stem the bleeding. With trembling hands, he dialed 119, his voice steady, but urgency evident. Detective Namayasa, out of uniform, I have a person with multiple stab wounds at 456 Kabayasha Street, in need of paramedics. Namo, Namo. Inko's voice was weak, barely audible. I'm here. Namayasa assured her, his grip tightening as he fought back tears. Save him. Keep him safe, Izuku. Inko managed to whisper. Okay, I will. But you will be better too, okay? Y you will live. Namayasa promised, his voice breaking. His... She... Inko struggled to speak, her breaths becoming shallower. Hisashi did this? Namayasa's voice was filled with anger. Mm-hmm. Inko confirmed, her eyes scanning the room in a final effort. In that moment, Inko fought with every fiber of her being clinging to life with a tenacity born of love for her son and her partner. She imagined a different reality, where happiness prevailed, where she and Namayasa walked down the aisle, Izuku calling him dad, and their lives filled with joy and laughter. But this was not that universe. In this world, Inko lay battered and broken, teetering on the edge of life, as death whispered its chilling invitation. Inko felt its cold embrace, drawing her in. Yet the sobs of Namayasa, his desperate pleas and promises, anchored her to the realm of living. Inko, please open your eyes. Stay with me. Namayasa begged, his voice raw. Help will be here soon. Please, just hold on a little longer. I can't lose you. You understand that? I can't lose you. Fuck. Inko. Izuku needs you. He needs his mother. You can't leave him. You can't leave us. But despite the prayers and wishes, his words fell on death ears. The gods remained unmoved, and death came to Inka Midoriya. Her journey was not peaceful. It was agonizing, filled with searing pain and torment far from what she deserved. But it's what she got. Namayasa clung 
onto her, even as her body grew limp, unwilling to accept her departure. But reality set in, harsh and unforgiving. He was gone, leaving behind a void that seemed insurmountable. Now, Namayasa was left with the weight of failure, the guilt of not being able to protect those he loved. He wouldn't make that mistake again. He would protect Izuku at all cost. The police had failed this family, but he won't. I know I said no notes, but small note, I cried writing this chapter and I cried recording it. I'm crying. God. I don't even think this is like the harshest chapter that I'm going to write. I think the harshest chapter is going further down the line. Specifically that one chapter I'm thinking about. Oh god, I'm tearing up just thinking about that chapter. Anyways, as always, my raindrops, make sure to eat, sleep, drink water, take your meds, have a wonderful day or night. Link to my Discord server and socials are down in the description. Subscribe to see more of my content, and thank you so much for watching.